Hello, I'm Carl Rowland with Sherline Products. In this video, we're going to go over tailstock backlash adjustment, uh, hand wheel removal, and uh, tailstock removal. So we have our 4400 lathe right here. Our regular, our tailstocks come with either a regular hand wheel, one and five eighths like this, or an adjustable hand wheel like this one. Okay. So for starts, the amount of backlash you should have on any of your axes is like two thousandths or less, which on an inch machine is two lines on your hand wheel. So if you take your locking lever on your tailstock and you lock it down so the tailstock can't move, and then you turn the hand wheel, the amount of play should be two lines or less. So this guy's about a line, a line and a half, and that's as good as it's gonna be. If you get it down to, to nothing at all, then your parts are sandwiched too hard together and it'll be extremely hard to turn the hand wheel. So you've got to have some play. And this is also for a, a tail stock that is doing drilling operations. Uh, if you have a couple thousandths of play, you're never going to know that when you drill a hole. It's not that critical. Okay. Um, on the adjustable hand wheel, we'll go over, it's, it's the same thing. If you lock it in place, you should have two, two lines or less. If you have more uh, play than that, then what I do is First of all, on your adjustable, you've got a locking screw right here in the back. You loosen that up and your collar turns. Your collar has an access hole in the side and you have to line that up with the set screw hole that's in the hand wheel. The set screw hole is almost always on the same, in the same areas as your hand wheel knob. So if you just put your hand wheel knob up and you turn the collar, you'll see that it's now lined up with the set screw that's inside. So what I want to do is unlock my spindle, turn this so that my hole and my access hole, are, my set screw and my access hole are straight up and down, and then I want to lock my spindle lock in place. It's a 332nd set screw. You put your 332nds through into the hand wheel, and you might need a little extra on if they put them on pretty good. Hold on a second. So I'm going to break it loose. So right now, and I, so this is an exaggeration, if this was tightened down right here, you would have all kinds of slop. That's how much slop there is now because I just moved the hand wheel. This is an insane amount of slop. So anyhow, what you do is you get it close to the top, you lock your spindle in place, and then you turn a little bit and that forces that's forcing the spindle out and the shoulder on the feed screw is being forced against the inside of the body so it's forced right there and then what I would want to do is unlock it and lock it down again okay but I don't want to lock it down on the same indent that the original set screw made so I'm going to turn it a little bit so it's got a fresh place on the shaft of the screw I'm then going to Pinch these both together so there's no backlash and tighten it down. Now, if I go to turn it, this guy went from almost two to about one thou worth of backlash. Then if I loosen this, uh, that's moving pretty good. To me, it's got a slight tight spot, so I would actually loosen this up just a hair. So where they had it at about one and a half is, is about where it belongs. So I'm going to tighten it down again. I'm going to turn it to the right to load the screw. I'm going to loosen it. And I'm just going to hold it gently against it. Tighten it down on a fresh area. And now I've got, I've got two thousands. Okay. Okay. Now when I turn it, my motion is nice and smooth, all right, all right, and that's that's good right there, okay. If you on the on the standard one and five ace hand wheel, you do the same thing. The set screw is right here; it's easy to see it, and you're doing the same thing. You lock it down. Actually, I put it this way so it's facing me. I'd lock this guy down, and I would force it. It's not locked down yet. I would force it till 
my set screw straight up and down. Then I could break that loose, pinch it in, tighten it up again, and see how much slop I have. And again, this guy's only at one. So this one's, this one's plenty good right here. All right, if you wanna take, if you find that you need to take your tailstock off, the way the tailstocks are set up is they've got a gib. The gib has these two button head screws. And the reason they're, they're there is so that no matter how much you loosen your locking screw, no matter how much you loosen this, the gib will only go down enough to make it loose. It won't come all the way off, okay? So what you do if you want to take this off, the easiest way to do it is to get a 1 8 inch Allen. Your tail stock is going to be on there like so. And you're just going to take your Allen wrench and just remove these two screws. And they're not in there tight. They're going up against the set screw. So when you put them back in, you just want to bring it up against the set screw like that. That's, that's it. You're not torquing it down or anything. So anyhow, these two screws are removed. Then you loosen the locking screw entirely, and as you do that, the gib comes off. And you take your screw out. So the gib's off, the screw's out, and then your tailstock just comes right off of the machine once the gib is removed, okay? All right and then you put your other tail stock on or whatever you're, you're doing. So that's the one way to remove it. That's the way I suggest you remove it. To put it back in place, you put it back on your dovetail against your dovetail. Put that in place, even it up, put your locking screw in, and just bring it down until it's just snug. There's good. Then put your 832s back in. They go in, and again, you're just gonna, you can tighten it by finger until it gets close, and then just put an Allen wrench on it and just make it snug. So that's by finger right there. My Allen wrench. I got a couple turns to go on this one. Okay, so right there, snug, and I'm gonna back it off a little bit. Same with this one. I'm gonna go snug, then back it off about a quarter turn. Then if I loosen my locking screw, tailstock moves easily, lock locks it in place. So, so you're set right there. Okay. The alternate way to remove your tail stock is to remove the hand wheel on your Z axis and then slide it off. You can do this, but why? Uh, if you do do that on this one here, okay, on the Z axis, I actually have four thousandths worth of backlash right now. If you do it, then you're going to want to get rid of your backlash when you put the hand wheel back on. So what I'm going to show you quickly is how to take care of that situation. So right now the collar's unlocked. I'm going to turn it. Right now it lines up with the set screw hole for my hand wheel. Get it in my set screw and I'm going to put it up about there. What I'm going to do to get rid of the backlash is get a piece of wood, something non-marring that's not going to damage anything on your machine. And I'm going to pinch it between the headstock and the cross slide. So I'm going to put it in there and I'm just going to pinch it put a little bit of pressure on it, pinch it, and I'm going to go until okay, right there. So with it pinched, okay, 
I'm gonna break this loose. And then again, right now this will come all the way off. What I wanna do is go to a different area on the screw. Yeah, I'll take it off and show you. There's gonna be an indent on the lead screw where the set screw was in. You don't wanna go back into that same indent. So you wanna turn it about 90 degrees. It's loaded here, which pushes my lead screw back against the shoulder in here. So again, I wanna just hold it in place, push it in, a little bit of pressure towards the lathe body. And I'm just gonna snug this down. Actually, I'm gonna tighten this down good. So right there. And now when I check my backlash, I'm gonna bring it out here. Now I have about a half thou backlash, but now it's also tighter to turn. Okay, your choices at this point is to put a little bit of oil in there and kind of work with it and see if you like it there. If that's too tight, which I think it is, then what you want to do is load it again, break it free, go another 90 degrees or 45, and this time put a little less pressure on it. And you did the last time. And lock it down there. I'm gonna bring it out. All right, and that's feeling pretty good. Nice and smooth and virtually no backlash. If you get it, you're gonna end up with about a thou backlash on average. Uh, less than two is what we guarantee. So anyhow, if you take the hand wheel off so you can pull your tailstock off, that's how you put it back on and set your backlash.